Okay, year eight, welcome back to week six. Draw a grid on the cereal box. For, so for this task, you are going to need a cereal box, obviously with nothing in it, okay? You will need a pen of some color, preferably maybe red or green, whatever you have, okay? Perhaps a little pencil. You might need a rubber if you've made some mistakes and a calculator. All right, you will need a ruler for this task, um, albeit it may not be a long enough ruler. Okay, but we will discuss that further in the task. Okay, so what you want to do here, if I take you back and remember that we created a 3D H. All right, and this area here, here across to here and down and across and up, it represents the front face of your cereal box. So really, if I can close my cereal box here, okay, that little rectangle of the six squares by 10 is right over to the edge of your cereal box. And this is where you're going to be drawing your letter, okay? It's very important at this point that you realize that you take your letter right out to those edges Okay, take them right out to the edges because really essentially you want to be able to come right out round and to save the sides of your cereal box because you want to save as much of the box as you possibly can because if you don't then you will have to find extra card to fill it in. Okay, so let's see, where do we go from here? So if I can just draw your attention to the B here and I showed this in um, week five part B. All right, and you, I, I had drawn your attention to the fact that this is a pink rectangle, which represents the front of the cereal box. It is six squares by 10. Forget about this extended area around the sides and along the top. Okay, we are going from six squares across and we're doing 10 squares down. And that's the whole surface area of your cereal box. So what we're gonna do is we are going to grid up our cereal box, six squares, by 10, okay, right out to the edge. Now, this is taken into consideration that the box is closed over, okay, you're not worrying about the little flaps or anything, okay, and you're closing the box over, and that you are just simply drawing it on the face of the cereal box. You can use any cereal box that you can get your hands on, okay? Just be careful if you have nut allergies that you're not using one with crunchy nut corn flakes or something, okay? But I'm sure you would be wise to that. So, to make it easier to draw on, you can flatten your box out, okay? You can see that I have it nice and flat, but be aware that you're simply concentrating on the main face of the box. All right, and we want to replicate what is here, so we are going to be drawing six squares by ten. So you need to do a wee bit of calculation. We need to get our numeracy in here, and what we're going to do is we're going to measure across, and we're only going to here because this is where the face of the box finishes, okay? And we are measuring across the size of the box, and at the moment the box is twenty-four point two. Okay, so if we get twenty-four point two. And we divide that by one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we divide it by six, and we will get our little measurement of 4.03. Well, if it's a point zero something, you're best just to round down or round up. And be aware that you may have a little discrepancy of some sort. So if that was the case, then you would keep the discrepancy again at one side. Okay, so we're going to put a little notch um, every on this occasion, every four centimeters. Now, everybody's just going to be different, okay? Uh, every four centimeters. Everybody's just going to be different simply because everyone has got, is using a different cereal box. Now, I'm purposely using my little pen, but you may want to use a pencil to start off with and get make sure that you get your, um, your measurements correct. It's very important, I cannot stress it enough, that you get precise measurements. Okay, so therefore, and just before you go any further, there is my four centimeters, my little notches the whole way across. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, like we did in week five, part A, rather than turning the box round and starting to measure the opposite way, I am going to keep it as it is, and this time I'm going to measure across from left to right again, okay, so that I can have any little inaccuracies 
all at the one side, so it means that my lines are not diagonal. Now when I go to draw that on, my ruler is not big enough, and you may well have that problem. Um, so you don't all have the beauty of having a nice long meter rule, okay? But at home, you may want to maybe search for one of those long um, tin foil roll boxes, and that might stretch for you, or an extra long book, or maybe if you have something as simple as a little length of wood, as long as it has a wee sharp straight edge. Okay, so I have managed to do six even sections okay because i am essentially gridding the box up six centimeters by ten okay beauty of having a long ruler okay if you have not got an extra long length of wood or tin foil box etc you could put little notches in the middle and then match to the middle notch and then match then up to the upper end um, I'm sure you will use something that will get to your end result. Okay, now if you can see there, I have drawn directly on past on the little flap area. So I've taken that right on up. It's not part of my grid. It's not going to be part of my grid. My grid is still going to be just on the face of the cereal box. But I have extended my, my little... Um, lines right up to the edge at both ends okay but my grid is going to only be on this part not on these okay so we have six squares and just do a double check they should all be beautifully straight you may want to do it with pencil first and then check it and then draw over it with your pen first okay so i've got one two three four five and six and they're beautifully straight the whole way up very important, so building your house, you want to make sure that you get the foundations correct. Now we're going to then measure down the long side. And if we remember, we'll look back at this. The long side has got 10 squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So we're going to measure down the long side here. Okay. And this is where my ruler is not long enough, so I'm going to put a wee dot where the 30 centimetres is. And I measure on across and I get 34.2. Now 34.2, divide that by 10. I think we all know it's 3.42. Okay, but again, that's a tricky one. So let's say we will go to the nearest, which is 3.5. Okay, and we will put a little notch where every 3.5 is. Now be very careful as you move down making sure that that is really even. This is where most pupils will make little errors. Okay, 3.5, okay, 3.5. Make sure it's as accurate as possible. And the best way you can do is actually look at your ruler and line it up with the edge of the box. And that will also help that you have created correct measurements. So 3.5. 3.5, 3.5, and then at the end I have got a little bit, it's about 3.4, um, and that's okay because what I will do is I'll measure from the top to the bottom again rather than turning the box round. I'm going to measure from the top, okay, and I, away we go again, 3.5, 3.5, making sure that they are very, very, very accurate, 3.5. Don't go on my measurements because you could have a different sized cereal box. Um, you may have a cornflakes box at home and think, oh, great, I have one of those. We'll use the exact measurements. However, it will possibly be a different size. So always check your measurements. You divide the short side by six and you divide the long side. So if you can see that wee sheet, you divide the short side by six or you divide the long side by ten. Now, if you were in Miss Heron's class, Miss Heron, she actually does it a slightly shorter way. She divides it by, by 3 and by 10. Um, it just means less squares. Okay, but um, out of the 18 years that I'm here, this is always what I do. Okay, so I'm going with what works for me. Okay, but essentially if you go by dividing it by the 3 squares and by five you should get the same so at the moment the very bottom square here there's a slight discrepancy 
I'm just a wee bit shy of 3.5 and likewise, but at least that discrepancy is going to be at the bottom, okay? Rather than at the bottom at this side and at the bottom and some um, shortage at the top. Okay, so we're going to then draw those on. Okay, I'm going to line those up. Make sure that your ruler is really super straight. Again, like building your house, it's very important that you get this right. And whilst I am just doing this, I'm going to use my long ruler again because I'm going to stretch right across, right out over the side of that box. The downside to this ruler is you can't see through it. And uh, a see-through ruler is great because you can always check just how straight you are. So I'm lining it up with all those little notches. Okay, there's the face of the box, but then continued right along the side. And there's a reason for that, and we'll see that then later. Okay, so this is week six, drawing the grid on the box. It will possibly take you, to do this properly, it should take you an hour. I know um, we certainly do not generally get to move on to the next point when doing this in class, when you're in school. So, hope you can see this. Okay, and joining them up, going right over, extending that right right over, and hopefully when you turn it round, okay, now I've done this for the purpose of the demonstration, I have actually done this on both sides. Okay, so I have the grid done on both sides. So as we would say, here's one we made earlier. So it should certainly mean that whenever you then turn it round, technically all your lines should add up or should meet. Okay, and that's really what you want. They must meet up. Okay, if they don't meet, there's a few there that are a wee bit inaccurate and I would actually fix those um, by then joining these and getting those amended. Okay, it's important that those are amended. There's little in it when you see that. Okay, because if you don't have those correct, when you go to make your letter, your letter will have a little twist in it. Okay. And that really is the drawing on of your grid. Now that could quite have possibly happen that whenever you turn it round, you will discover that you have not got all the lines fully matching. But it's important then that you work at it before you move any further. Work at it and get those lines all evened up. And if it's really bad, I would suggest you take a new cereal box and restart. Because it can be very deflating when you get further on in to the task. And your letter is not staying together as it should do. Okay. All right. So you can see those. There's the little grid. Okay. And you can see that I've extended on to the little flaps here at the top. All right. So when I close that up. I haven't taken the, the box apart, only at the bottom just to allow me to flatten it. Okay, so there is my little box and it has got one, two, three, four, five, six squares by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Checking at the back, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, that, my dears, will take you certainly a an hour I would say to do that correctly all right make sure that you extend your little lines across they're not part of the grid but just extend them across okay extend them up extend them at the bottom okay in whatever way that they are going be it horizontal or vertical okay and those that is your box then ready for you to draw on your letter and that will be in week seven drawing the letter on a cereal box and beginning to cut out. Okay, so I'll see you in week seven. Thank you very much. Bye.